Hey, what's up? It's Emilio, and in this video, we're going to check out the editing performance as well as other professional apps and how they run on the XPS 17. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, and I will see you at the end. So starting right off in Geekbench 5, we are seeing a difference between plugged in versus on battery in terms of the CPU performance. We're seeing a drop of about 250 points in the single core score and about 1,500 in the multi-core score you'll see on screen now. And that's a significant difference, but not too crazy. Now, the bigger deal, I think, is the compute benchmark, which shows GPU performance, which we're running right now. On the left is going to be plugged in, and then on the right is on battery. We did have to start that one a little bit quicker so that they can match up for the end result. Now with this one, we are seeing an even bigger drop in performance, all the way down to about 25,000, up from 72,000. So that's about a two thirds drop in performance just from being on battery. You'll see that on screen right now. And moving right on to the next test, we're going to do a couple of Blender renders. This first one is of a barbershop. You'll see that coming now. It's a fairly complex scene and tests out the performance of rendering using an application like Blender. So this is running at 1280 by 720. So a standard HD image, and it's going to go ahead and complete that render in about 22 minutes and 51 seconds. And you can see this rendered perfectly onto the next test. We see this one ran and it took about 15 minutes and 41 seconds or so. And you can see that image as well. Also a 1280 by 720 image. In our next test, we're going to test out DaVinci Resolve and we're going to do a simple one minute and four second timeline. This is of some drone footage over a beach area. And I'm going to do just a couple of edits on here. And the first one is adding some film grain. The second one is a simple color correction. And then we're going to go ahead and export that using the NVIDIA encoder. Because we have the 2060, we get to use the NVENC encoder. And we're going to go ahead and save that and start the render now. And you can see that on screen. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to wait during the whole thing. But this renders out in a not, not too long time, considering it's a one minute 4K clip and we're adding something as complex as film grain, which does take some processing power. And as we, as we wait for that to render out here, I'm just going to mention we do see, you know, pretty low CPU usage. So in this type of test, we are GPU bound, but having more cores is always better with rendering in general. So having something like the i7-10875H processor really helps out here. And as we finish that up here, we're going to go ahead and make sure that clip works perfectly. And as you can see here, it looks beautiful. It ended up rendering perfectly in no time at all. Now on to the next test, we're going to test out latency mon. Now this test is important because it allows us to see whether or not the system can handle real time audio. I know some previous Dell models, as I've been reading online, have had issues with latency specifically when handling real time audio. And so for people working with, you know, high end music workflows, this is an issue. And so I ran this test for about eight minutes. And as you can see there, uh, it was able to handle it just fine. Moving on, we're going to test out Cinebench R20. Now, this is a test of the CPU, and we can see how it stacks up against other CPUs of similar natures. And I did speed this up quite a bit, but you can see here in just a moment, we're going to get a result. And that result was about 2,955, which is a little bit lower than other eight core models. I'm not sure if that's due to some thermal limitations or power limitations, but either way, we are getting a little bit over 3,000, which is not too bad, but also not exactly the best that an eight core can offer in a laptop in general. So that's about all I have for you for this video. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe and all that great stuff. Uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get a conversation going down in the comments. Let me know what you thought what you think of the XPS performance and what you want to see in the future. Uh, my initial impressions and just from using this for a while now are that it, it performs really well, but I really can't help but feel like, again, it does feel a little stifled by Intel. I have no issues with Intel, but I do want to see their new processors come out soon. Uh, I feel like these run a little warmer than they should. They don't perform as well as they could. And if we saw, you know, 10 nanometer, 45 watt chips, or even better, seven nanometer chips, then we'd see just massive performance and thermal gains in these systems. But until then, we still have a fantastic laptop that performs really well. 
And that's about all I have to say on the matter. So I will see you in the next one. Let's talk about it down in the comments and get a good conversation going. Uh, let me know what you thought and if you'll be getting the XPS or not. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.